All right, everybody, welcome back. Today, I wanted to make a video about the um, new texture painting feature in Unreal 5.5 Experimental. Uh, so this was added so that we can finally vertex paint efficiently on nanite meshes. Nanite meshes don't play nicely with traditional vertex painting because um, it's not memory efficient to store uh, that kind of data on a per vertex bait basis on a mesh with so many vertices. And also uh, the vertex data on a nanite mesh isn't consistent, right? As you zoom in or out, it's popping in and out of um, detail. And so if you have per vertex data being stored um, as you zoom in and out of the mesh, that vertex data will disappear and reappear. So vertex coloring on nanite meshes is not great. So the uh, solution that Epic came up with is using virtual textures uh, instead. So it's important to make sure that in your project settings you've enabled virtual texture support uh, in order to use this feature. Uh, so uh, then you just need a mesh that has the, um, the feature enabled. Uh, it should be by default on, on new projects, I believe. So enable vertex color mesh painting. Uh, and then you can also, on a per mesh basis, override the UV channel to paint to and the uh, texture resolution. So by default, uh, it will use the texture coordinate index and resolution specified in either your project or in the mesh. It's also important to make sure that your uh, UVs are set up properly. So UV channel zero here you'll see is overlapping. And this would cause anything that you paint on one side of your mesh to be duplicated on all of the others. And that's probably not what you want. So here on UV channel one, I have um, each face non-overlapping in its UV space. So let's go ahead and switch over to mesh paint. And by default, we'll be on vertex color. We're gonna switch over to texture color. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add. And you'll see that as I press add, uh, this mesh, mesh pe paint texture, uh, virtual texture asset has been automatically created. And then we can go to paint and uh, go ahead and just let's go ahead and fill this in with our plaster. And then I'm going to swap back to the stone. You'll see that as I paint here, And uh, reveal the stone. I can fill in the cracks. And I can do that on a per face basis. And really get this looking the way I want. And I can switch to the RGB channel here. Um, so and you can do this. I've decided to make this moderately high resolution, but you can actually keep this resolution really low and get some pretty decent results so you're not wasting texture memory. But for the sake of the example, I thought it looked a little nicer. So now let's talk about what is happening in the material to get this effect. Um, and in this case, it's not anything too different than you would have for any other um, Let's see here. So let's switch over to the material. So it's using height lerp uh, to get that nice transition. All right, so you can see that working in effect right there. Fills in the cracks first and then goes over the top. So that's pretty typical standard stuff. Um, but what's new about this material uh, is the mesh paint texture object node and the mesh paint texture replace node. So the idea behind this is that some of our objects are gonna have mesh, uh, mesh paint on them, like this one, but some of them aren't. And we want to be able to tell our material what to do in either case. So if there is not a mesh paint asset, then sample this texture instead. If there is, then the mesh paint texture object needs to be plugged into a texture sample and it needs to be assigned the appropriate texture coordinate that you are painting to in order to get things to match properly. And then I'm outputting that as a paint value. That paint value is driving our uh, height texture number two. 
right, texture number one is the stone. And it's also driving the transition phase between these height textures. Um, and then I'm outputting that as a lerp alpha. That lerp alpha is being sampled to decide how to blend between these different textures. Um, and you'll also find this blend angle corrected normals. And what this is doing is giving some shape here. So what I mean by that is if I go ahead and go on here and I turn this to zero, you'll see that um, the blend looks very flat, even though you know it does fill in the cracks first. Um, it looks kind of like the, the blaster is just floating in space. Whereas if I turn this up, the higher I go, you'll see it starts creating um, a transition. So I'm going to set that to 0.7. And this is using the um, normal from height map node. So uh, typically you would take a texture object, plug it in, and then you can generate a normal map using the height map. Um, then the mesh paint texture replaces deciding do I use the noise texture or do I use the mesh paint once again. Um, and all of this is just what is inside here. The reason for that is because uh, the mesh paint texture object node cannot plug into a normal texture 2D object currently for uh, material functions. Hopefully they fix that in the future, but that means that I had to copy the contents of this material function into the main texture so that I could take the mesh paint texture object and um, use that to sample our texture. And that is being blended with our regular normal map. So this gives it much more shading and shape. So that is really all there is to it here. Uh, obviously I'm using nanite tessellation here um, as well, but uh, yeah, that's been covered many times by others. I didn't see anybody really talking about this yet. There's no documentation. So um, if you wanted to experiment with it, hopefully this is helpful in getting started and thanks for watching.